It's another short video on the Collins KWS1 transmitter. I've now finished refurbishing the um, the main transmitter unit, and um, it's all fully aligned up up to the driver stage, because um, to align the driver stage and the PA stages, it needs the um, the full model 428A-1 power supply um, with the uh, with the transmitter. At the moment, I'm just using it with a a homebrew power supply which is on the end of the bench there which provides about 275 volts b plus and the necessary 6.3 volts uh, heater voltage at around four and a half amps so at the moment the um the transmitter is tuned to uh, 3.4 uh, megahertz on the 80 meter band and that's uh, being displayed on the spectrum analyzer there um, and that signal is coming via a a times 10 scope probe plugged into the um, the grid connection of the 6 6 cl 6 um, driver tubes there's two of those in there the pa tubes are out of the chassis as well at the moment so the signal's coming out of here through a 30 db attenuator into the spectrum analyzer and it's giving you something like about a, a minus 50 db um, signal uh, just for illustration purposes um, the alignment is, is reasonably straightforward. I had a little bit of problem with the crystals though. The, uh, these six, this bank of six crystals here, um, they would not um, uh, resonate at the correct frequency. And there's no way of really changing the resonant frequency of these crystals in this particular rig. Um, the adjustments over here, these slugs, are on the plate of the oscillator tube and they do pull a little bit on the crystal frequency, but not a great deal. Certainly not enough to pull these onto frequency. There were a couple of kilohertz or more off. So I built a series of little adapters with a trimmer, a series trimmer in each one and a silver mica capacitor um, in parallel with it. So these can all be trimmed to the exact uh, resonant frequency needed to multiply up to the um, transmitter output frequency when mixed with the the permeability tune oscillator which is in here which uh, operates around about three megahertz so um first of all i, I realigned the um the pto as it's not the permeability tuned oscillator um then i got the uh, the crystals working on the correct frequencies and then carried out the um, the alignment per the manual which uh, comprises uh, setting up the uh, the sideband select switch which uh, actually rotates the, uh, the PTO very slightly just to keep the um, carrier frequency the same on whichever sideband so when I switch the sidebands the carrier frequency clicks back to the right frequency whichever sideband is selected um, then the uh, the rest of the stages were aligned after that um, so with, with that done uh, move on to the, um, the there's a couple of traps to, to trap the uh, the PTO frequency and to also trap the four megahertz crystal frequency when it's double to eight megahertz. Um, so those adjustments are under the chassis and all the remainder of the RF adjustments are above the chassis apart from apart from um, uh, one of the neutralization uh, trimmers for the I think it's for the driver stage no it's not it's for the it's for the first mixer plate circuit i think on the uh, on the 80 meter band but i haven't done that adjustment yet all the all the neutralization takes place with all the tubes installed and all the heaters on so at the moment it's just aligned through to the driver stages uh, grids um the alignment as i say is pretty straightforward 80 meters uh, is these four slugs and um, plus three slugs here and you work through the uh, the, the uh, 40 meters and 20 meters and so on. All, all, all the, the um, trimmers and slugs are all marked on the chassis, which is quite quite cool. Um, there were one or two little strange things, and uh, the, the, the manual's got a couple of errors in it. The third edition manual, which is applicable to this route, has got a couple of errors um, in the manual, which are spotted and, and corrected for. And also some of the, um, the trimmers are marked um, not incorrectly, but it's a bit confusing. For example, this slug here is marked 29.5. It's actually used to tune on two, two of the bands, but it doesn't say that on the, on the chassis, but it does say that in the manual. So 
interesting, um, but it was pretty straightforward overall. So just to demonstrate, so what I'm going to do is just go through each band and uh, um, retune the spectrum analyzer each time. I'll just leave the um, the PTO tuned to the same frequency, and um, I'll just uh, put the same frequency into the spectrum analyzer for each of the bands. So say so we're on 80 meters, so I'll click to the 40 meter band. So it trace vanishes off the spectrum analyzer. And so it gets something close to 7.4 megahertz on the spectrum analyzer. And there we go, 7.4 megahertz exactly. So go to uh, 20 meter band, it's gone off the spectrum analyzer. So we now need to tune to 14.4 megahertz. So 14.4 megahertz. And we're Spot on again on the um, spectrum analyzer. Move to the uh, 15 meter, uh, 15 meter band. Uh, so we've now got 21.4 megahertz on the scale. So tune that into the spectrum analyzer, and we're spot on there. And you notice that the the output level varies a little bit between the bands, and that is adjustable. Depending on to change the the carrier level, you can see you can change the carrier level quite a bit. So I've just got it set around about seven at the moment. Um, try the 11 meter band. So we're now 26.8 megahertz. So 26.8. So again, we're spot on frequency there. And uh, the lower 10 meter band. So we're at 28.4 megahertz. Again, we're spot on frequency there. And finally, the, uh, the upper 10 meter band at 29.4 megahertz on the, uh, on the dial. And we're spot on there as well. So the, uh, the transmitter's uh, tuned up as far as I can take it uh, on, the, uh, on the bench here. Uh, next step is to get the power supply working and the uh, it weighs about 170 pounds and uh, yesterday my son-in-law gave me a hand to uh, to lift it onto a plinth uh, in the garage so I can work on it in there. It needs some recapping, maybe some resistors changing. Um, I've already checked the tubes and I've got replacements for the weak ones and when that's done um, I'll carry out some preliminary checks on the power supply then uh, the transmitter unit will take it down to the garage and power it up with the uh, with that power supply and then I can uh, complete the alignment and hopefully uh, everything will work okay. There we go, Collins KWS-1 refurbished.